We've dealt with the situation of an object sitting on a table. Let's now deal with the situation of an object which is going down a ramp. Okay, so here's our situation. We've got an object on a ramp, and this is angle theta. Our object is of mass m, sitting right there. And we want to figure out, let's first figure out the situation without friction. Now this is a diagram that you must be able to uh, complete and understand why it is what it is. So we'll start with this. Let's draw, let's say there's no friction for this one. Let's start off with no friction. And uh, so that means that what are the forces acting on this object? And how many are there? Well, there is only two forces. There's the force of gravity pointing down that way, which we'll label mg, and there's only one other force. There is the normal force. The normal force will draw it right here. And those are the only two forces. If you were asked to draw a free body diagram uh, on the AP exam, you would have to draw only those two forces and no components. This year on the AP exam, if you draw components, they will mark you wrong, and they'll even tell you that. Uh, so there is our entire free body diagram of the object, but that doesn't necessarily help us analyze it. When we want to analyze it, we've got to break it up into components. And whenever you do a uh, situation like this, uh, with uh, almost every problem where an object's on a hill, you want to set up your coordinate axis like this. X and Y. Um, for all these ramp problems, excepting the banked turn problem, which we'll do later, you must set up your coordinate axis like this because we need one coordinate system that we can express everything in. Now, this makes the normal force real easy. That's directly in the Y direction. Um, but we've got to split this force of gravity up into two components. Let's do that right now. I'm going to use different colors here. So we've got uh, the X component of this, which I'm going to draw this way. And notice that all i got to do is I've got to bring this out just as far horizontally, and you can do that with a ruler, just bring it out exactly as far horizontally as this, this one goes. And then there is our, our horizontal component, or our X component would be a better way to say that. And we also need our vertical or Y component, and that's going down this way. So notice we've got, I'm going to make these solid, we've got our Y component, Again, that is perpendicular to this hill. And we've got our X component, which is parallel to the hill. Sometimes uh, I call these forces, uh, typically I'll call this one F sub X, or if you prefer, you could call it F parallel because it's parallel to the, uh, the hill. This one right here, we'll call this F sub Y, because, or you could also call it F perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the hill. Um, now these two forces, are those extra forces? Where are those from? Those are simply the force of gravity. Those aren't new forces. All I'm doing is I'm breaking up the force of gravity into its components, one parallel with X, one parallel with Y. So you must be able to do that diagram. You're uh, remember that the force of gravity will always be the hypotenuse. This is a right angle right here. The angle between the X and Y is going to be a right angle right there, always. So you got to be able to break it up. Then we got to figure out which is which. Now, where is theta in this triangle? Here is how you figure that out. Notice that uh, theta is between this side and this side. I'm going to use uh, some different colors here uh, to indicate where theta is. So here is We'll make this side green, that side green, and I'm going to make this side red. A little red here. This side is red. So what i got to do is look at those two sides and figure out which sides in this triangle, in my vector triangle, are perpendicular and or parallel. Well, notice that here's a red side. Which side is perpendicular or parallel to that? Uh, nothing's parallel to it, so we must need to use perpendiculars. The red side... This side is perpendicular to that. There's my mg. I'm just going to do a little 
line there because that's this red is perpendicular to that red. Which is perpendicular to this green? This green, well, it's perpendicular to this side right there. So I'll make that green. Now you see these two sides, where do they come together? Right here. So this is how we know that that angle is theta because the red side, mg, is perpendicular to this red side. The green side right there is perpendicular to this green side. So we find where these come together and that is angle theta. That tells us immediately that f sub x, which I'm going to use, is going to be equal to and you're going to want to practice with your vectors, so Katoa, you got to get good at it. Fx is equal to mg sine of theta. It's the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, because it's the opposite. In the similar way, Fy is going to be, let's find my color here, Fy is going to be mg cosine of theta. And that tells us one, because this is adjacent, that tells us one other important thing. The normal force, because this is not accelerating up and down, hopefully when you drive down a hill, you never fall into a sinkhole or hit some kind of booby trap spring that shoots you up in the air. You are not going to accelerate in the y direction at all. That tells us, because the net force in the y direction is zero, because you're not accelerating in the y direction, that tells us that the normal force must also equal mg cosine theta, just the same as Fy since there is no acceleration in the y direction. That is how we know that the normal force is mg cosine theta in this situation. That is not a general rule that the normal force is mg cosine theta, but it happens to be in this situation.